to Live in the Solution. I'm your astrologer and tarot card reader, Mary Trimble, here with um, the astrology reading for this week, for the week of the uh, 20th, April the 20th through the 26th. Um, so I just, listen, I'm doing the astrological re reading separate because it's there's a lot of information and it would have made the videos with the tarot readings way too long um and people just don't <laughs> have the patience so i would i i figured i would separate them now before i start um please don't forget to like share comment if you like it and listen um please check that you have uh, subscribed. If you are a subscriber, check again because every time uh, YouTube updates, I've heard that people get knocked off. Um, so if you could do that, I would really appreciate it. Okay, so now the first thing that's happening this week is on Wednesday, the 22nd at 10.25 p.m., um, Eastern Daylight Time. It's 3.25 a.m. on the 23rd, Thursday the 23rd at British Summer Time. And of course in LA it's earlier, 7.25 um, on the 22nd. So this new moon in Taurus and new moons are when the sun and the moon are together. They're conjunct, right? Um, and that is in Taurus. Now, the moon is exalted in Taurus. It's a wonderful, magnetic, charming uh, place to be. It's very auspicious. Now, there's some complications with this new moon. Now, first of all, Taurus is a fixed sign, right? It's very, it doesn't like change. Taurus does not like change. And Taurus is, uh, it's an earth sign, right? So it's very kind of, um, it, well, it's feminine. All earth signs are feminine. So it's a receptive energy. It's like feeling, we're receiving that energy from the cosmos. And we are all made of stardust. Don't forget that. And that's, you know, science. We are all... All of us are made out of stardust. So we are connecting the earth with the uh, cosmos. So this is a beautiful energy. Now, it's about kind of remaining calm, right? Because Taurus is a very grounded, very strong, very calm. Think of the bull, right? Very uh, placid and very just slowly moving about the field, eating grass, and and very calm. But if you rile that, if you throw a red piece of cloth in front of that uh, bull, it can go from 1 to 30 miles an hour, and it can be on top of you in two seconds. And, you know, it's a very dangerous animal. Now... Um, so it's very powerful. This is a very powerful energy. Um, now, the wild card with this new moon is the conjunction with Uranus in Taurus at the moment, right? Now, Uran Uranus is the maverick. It's the planet of sudden happenings. It's shocks. It's surprises. It's about it's a far Uranus is like the fast mind it's the genius in us right it's futuristic it's innovative um electric it's like thunder and lightning right and it's kind of Uranus shakes up the status quo um so of course uh Taurus is not very uh, comfortable with that maverick energy, you know, the change that's happening. And at the same time, right, there is a square, which is a contentious energy. It's a, you know, it's very kind of a contentious energy between Saturn and this uh, new moon with the sun and the moon at the same degrees. And, and Uranus is affected by that too because they're all together, right? They're only three degrees apart. Um, so there's restrictions, right? Listen, um, this Earth energy, it's 
you know, it's about it's about connecting with uh, nature. It's about gardening, right? It's about um, this. It's about this beautiful. This is interesting, right? I'm sorry I digress. Um, because we have this restriction. We are in this pandemic, right? This global pandemic. And we are at home. Most of us are at home. Of course, some are out working, but a lot of us are at home. So we have these restrictive messages. Uh, these restrictive uh, rules and regulations on us, even if we're outside, you know, people are being forced to wear masks and, and social distancing. And so it's interesting that, um, that this, uh, that Saturn is uh, connected to this full moon. So we're still in this restrictive mode. And, it's going to force us to kind of look at, um, look at our lives and what is important to us. And this is a really, really, really important time to be still, right? To be calm, remain the calm in the storm because the storm is all around us and sometimes unseen. So we really need to remain in the uh, calm. And I'm telling you, meditation is brilliant during this time because that's when we get the downloads. That's when we are genius. We connect with our genius. This is a time to cultivate our genius, to, to, to actually, we can do, we can learn things. We can take online classes. My friend's taking on, an online acting class. How cool is that? I mean, there's loads, you know, astrology lessons online. You can do everything. You can have a dance class or an exercise class online live. I mean, people are getting really creative during this time. And this is about being creative. Now, I will say also about this moon, it's very powerful, intuitive energy, right? Because Uranus is very kind of higher octave and the moon is very intuitive it's very feminine it's very the divine feminine you know it's about seeking that divine the divine feminine it's about nurturing um it's about but it really is connecting with creativity you know people have grown little gardens in their kitchens and you know or on their verandas or fire escapes you're not really supposed to do that on fire escapes not here in New York anyway um, but you can you know people are really cultivating plants from the ends of vegetables you know and and onions you can grow put them in a bit of water and a lovely plant comes up it's amazing um so this is really about coming back to our bodies. How can we be healthier? How can, what can we do with, what can, because Taurus is really about the body. What can we um, do to be healthy? What can, how can we secure our health, right? You know, and, and Taurus is about banking. And, and I, look, I've, a lot of people have said this, that, you know, what Uranus is moving through. Taurus and by the end of you know and probably another just over six years it'll be in Taurus um, before it moves into Gemini which is a bit lighter um, Uranus is going to redefine our finances probably no more cash by the end of that six years everything will be locked electronic everything is you know inve inventions are coming out and it's interesting we can kind of use this time to tap into our genius you know what can we do that's creative we, and it, when we meditate we are connected with the ethereal realm and we get downloads um, so there's a theme of this, uh, of economic and, uh, financial issues going on for everyone. Um, and that's what this square is, uh, creating too. And it's going to glip it, it, look, it, it kind of gives us a glimpse of what is happening for the whole year right now. This is, listen, it's a really tumultuous time and I know it's very challenging for a lot of people and there's a lot of fear 
uh, in this uh, environment. Um, let me just look at this, uh, my, yeah. There's a lot of fear during this time. So, which brings me to the next aspect for this week, which is Pluto retrograde. And Pluto retrograde, it kind of, it goes for, it goes retrograde for five months each year. Um, and it's a time to look at our, our, where does our power lie um, and control in our life? Have we given it away or are we exercising it too much? Over, are we overlording on someone else? Um, who holds the power or control? Now, Pluto um, is really kind of about, uh, it's an outer planet, so it's about bigger things. Right. They say that Pluto, I think who was the I've said it before, the famous um, astrologer who says Pluto makes small things big and big things small. So it's really uh, uh, indicative of this pandemic. Right. This tiny virus has been made huge by it's gone global. Now it is conjunct um, Jupiter, which is the planet of expansion. However, it is in Capricorn and Capricorn is about ambition, but it's also about essentials and restriction. So I think this is what happens. Pluto deconstructs, right? It breaks things down. It's like the death card, death and rebirth. And Jupiter will be able to help structure something new going forward it'll it'll give us the opportunity to structure something different so really a proper death and rebirth so you know astrologers have been saying this for years it's been uh, and of course nobody really um nobody that i've heard of no astrologer um, maybe a couple of mediums but not uh, uh psychics i mean have um predicted that this would be a pandemic coming in that that would be the change because we've all known that it's been it would be life before 2020 and life after 2020 um so this next couple of years and i always think of pluto as like being in the hallway right so we have to kill off what's happened before and we have to accept that uh, uh, pluto demands change and transformation I mean, demands it. We can't avoid it. Um, so when we surrender to that change and transformation, then we can transform, right, our lives and we can evolve and move forward. So this is a time of awakenings. People are waking, waking up. There are epiphanies. We have to kind of find the joy in this moment. We have to accept it and then just move on the best way we can, the best possible way we can. And I really think that um, it's a time to look at our destructive behaviors because Pluto is all about uh, karma, right? What have we done to get ourselves to where we are? What are our issues? What destructive behaviors have we engaged in um, over the last year, a few years, perhaps? Um, has it been financial? Is it addictive in some way? Have you shopped too much? Have you used drugs? Have you overdrunk? Have you engaged in uh, dangerous and destructive sexual behavior or, uh, you know, taboo or something, you know, porn or something? So we have to kind of look at those destructive behaviors and 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 change them let them go this is a time that we have to work i mean we really have to change how we move forward and we've got to find our way so that's why i say it's so important to just be still to connect with the ethereal realm to meditate this you know listen at the same time, let me just look at this, um, at your chart, at the chart for this. Let me change this because I had it on. Um, on the 25th, uh, is that right? Yes. We have 
um, we have Mercury uh, squaring in a very challenging aspect to Pluto. And that means Pluto and uh, Jupiter. So that means that we can um, be very afraid of dying. And that's what a lot of people are. They're afraid of dying. They are in fear. They are taking action to ensure that they won't, uh, that they won't die. And this is very, um, this is really extremely important for us to not make decisions based on fear. And to not go down, I always say don't go down the rabbit hole, right? And the only way we won't go down the rabbit hole is if we meditate. Because when we connect within, there's no fear there. There's just unconditional love. And it's, you know, it, things are going to happen. We can evolve, but we need to be calm. There's always a solution, guys. That's why I call my business Live in the Solution. If we're worried or in fear, then we are mired in the problem. And that's not helpful to any of us. Um, so at the same time, we still have this beautiful connection between Venus in uh, Gemini and Mars in Aquarius. So Venus and Mars are these, and they're two air signs. Venus and Mars are very... Um, they're the archetypal lovers, aren't they? Um, so, uh, you know, libidos may be high <laughs> at this time, just to add a little spice in the, you know, in the soup uh, or, you know, put a fly in the ointment, if you will. So, listen, people are uh, virtually dating. They're doing some virtual dates. So, you know, they're, what, they're having virtual parties, Zoom parties or dates online. And you can like have a drink of wine with your potential partner and you can get creative with that. There's still ways that we can engage with each other um, from a distance and still feel some kind of intimacy there. Uh, so, look, I don't want to minimize people's pain in it any way, but I want to really uh, warn of the dangers of going into that dark place um, because it's very hard to get yourself out of it when you go in. So I always say it's like gratitude and it's about, look, I, on every video I make, I was guided to make a, um, I was inspired and, and my guides asked me to make a guided meditation for this uh, pandemic and, and I will make more um, but there's a short one and I did it before this uh, before I came on here I did I I did it myself um, because it's you know I do TM transcendental meditation but it was just quicker and I wanted to hear it and, and see what I thought so it's if you don't know anything about meditation it's a wonderful way to connect and to uh, cleanse your chakras and to keep your mind on, you know, the inner you and separate. Look, I always think of Rumi when I think of meditation, right? I am not this hair. I am not the skin. I am the soul that lives within. And the mind is, you don't have to identify with that chattering monkey brain as we say in in meditation that's constantly going you're not good enough you you know too old you're too young you're too fat you're too thin you're too stupid you're too you know you whatever it is whatever your dialogue is be aware of that internal dialogue and you can't really shut it up but you can quieten it and push it back into the background you can you can let it fade into the background and you can you can learn to laugh at it you can learn to laugh at it and separate yourself. You know, that's where you want to come. That's where you want to get to in meditation. You know, because sometimes I'm like listening to that internal dialogue. And then all of a sudden I just laugh and I go, I'm not listening to you today. Sorry. <laughs> and I laugh because mine wants me to turn the television on and not do any work. <laughs> and just, you know, get lost in the storylines, you know, um, or 
you know, do whatever it is that I, uh, distract me from what I need to do. That's what mine does. And sometimes I give in to it, you know, and other times I'm like, no, not today, darling. And I tell you when I'm strongest, when I meditate and I have been meditating since the 80s and sometimes I do it religiously and sometimes I don't do it so often. But I have noticed that um, if I don't meditate one day, then my state of mind starts to change. And, and you see, I mean, you can, there's so many studies. I mean, when you see, there's a movie called Insai, and it's a brilliant, it's a little, a documentary, and it goes around all these children around the world and how when they, um, you know, in one school, they're not punished. Um, they are uh, brought in and they're made to meditate. And it's amazing when they become mindful, these children's behaviors completely change. And then they teach their parents how to do it. I mean, it's brilliant. It's called Insai. I'll try and find a link to it. I don't know if I'll, I'll be able to, but, um, check that out. And, and they've done studies with prisoners who do really well when they meditate. There's no violence. There's no need to. You've got this, you've got this inner love, this depth that, that you can't, you can't get that love from outside. It's impossible. It's so wonderful. It's such acceptance. And when we connect with that, we can constantly be looking for something that's like that on the outside that we can, that's why some people have always um, a little disappointed in their partners. <laughs> Anyway, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. I'm going to put the links to the uh, to the tarot readings for the zodiac signs um, underneath when I get them up. I'm going to record them now, but I want to get this up before, so they'll be uh, the links will be in there shortly. Oh, guys, thank you so much for tuning in. Please don't forget to like, share, comment and subscribe. Uh, liking and sharing really gets the logarithm up there. And I really appreciate it. If you'd like a personal reading or a chart interpretation, the link will be below. And join the Facebook group because I will be doing a live feed on the new moon. I do a live feed every two weeks on the new moon and the full moon respectively in that private astrology group. And we have so much fun. It's a lovely uh, environment. It's very supportive. Uh, so information on that will be below and check out my Patreon page, Patreon page. Uh, I post things there. I don't post in other places. And what else? Instagram. And um, I'm going to be starting a TikTok soon. Oh, I can't wait. Um, so I'll be leaving that shortly in, in other videos. Anyway, the link. So thank you guys. I love you all and I'll see you next week. Oh.